everybody that's right the boston source here checking in and we got you know something new here we're going to be uh trying out i got you know my boy over here brother great skills to join us to you know talk about various topics on the sport of boxing uh you know particularly what's been going on uh you know we've had like a couple of things uh through the newswire here you know over the past few days so you know we're gonna get uh you know brother uh skills take on it uh first off we're gonna talk about the uh, fight that was just uh, agreed to for the vacant WBC lightweight title, Shakur Stevenson versus Frank Martin. Both of those fighters are undefeated. They're in the lightweight division, and this is going to be a key fight there in the lightweight division for both fighters. Of course, Shakur Stevenson is a two-division uh, world champion, champion of featherweight, mm -hmm. featherweight, and you got Frank Martin has been there in the lightweight division since the start of his pro career and has, you know, had a good string of wins, particularly over the past couple of years so uh this is a pretty good fight or i say a very good fight uh there in the lightweight division so uh great what 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 do you got in reference to this fight being made good matchup i mean this is what we've been waiting to hear you know we want to see the exciting fights instead of just fights thrown together i mean two guys right now at a good time in their career both of them coming off wins Frank didn't look as well his last outing, you know, but he still got the job done. Shakur looked fabulous. I mean, it's 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 two combatants going at it, and that's what we want. That's what boxing fans want. You know, give give the fans exactly what we want. We want the big fights, you know, especially after um, Spence and um, Bud. You know, it's it's time to get the fans what we want. It's still the best combat sport in the world when the right guys fight each other. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, here with this uh, about, you know, this is kind of like, you know, one of the uh, better bouts that could be made there in the lightweight division. I know that Shakur Stevenson, you know, was looking to face uh, Devin Haney, uh, what would have been for the undisputed ch uh, titles there at the lightweight division. But, you know, Haney, uh, you know, decided to uh, move up and wait to, uh, you know, fight at 140 pounds. So uh, Shakur Stevenson, you know, was looking around to see if there was uh, anyone available for him to uh, fight there. and. You know, we had uh, Frank Martin and with the WBC uh, placing an order for this fight. And then you had something where, OK, they would negotiate to uh, see if they made this fight take place. And it looks like that's going to go forward. So, um, you know, we're going to see, you know, like I said, these two styles, uh, Shakur Stevenson, you know, of course, is uh, one of the better defensive fighters in the game. Uh, had, you know, his uh, impressive win over Shuchiro Yoshino in April. And as you mentioned with Frank Martin, he did, you know, have a little bit of a issue there with uh, Artem Hartunian uh, in his last bout, you know, but, you know, he had been, you know, on a string of very good wins uh, coming from uh, last year too. So, you know, he still has that hot streak uh, there while being undefeated as well. So it's a very good matchup with two top king, top 10 guys uh, there at lightweight. So, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to that, man. Um, but, you know, for some, they feel like this is something that, you know, where uh, Shakur Stevenson uh, could kind of like show, I, I guess, something uh, there in the lightweight division, you know, even though, as mentioned, you know, he's been a featherweight world champion. He, you know, was a unified super featherweight champion, defeated Oscar Valdez uh, by a significant margin. So, uh, you know, he's just looking for, I guess, uh, another one of those showcase or uh, high profile fights. And, you know, maybe this fight against Frank Martin will be one of those. Yes, I, I, I respect Shakur. I mean, Shakur is trying to solidify his spot in the game. You know, he wants to be one of the major players. If you listen to him talk, he always talk about Bud. He refers Bud like a big brother. So it's always like he, he refers Bud as pound for pound king. But he's he's right in line, and I respect him. I mean, it's like he wants the big fights. You know, I think he his skill level is great. And and so is Frank Mars. I mean, I think this is a fight right here is, is is very intriguing. I mean, a lot of people think that Shakur, um, skill wise, is is levels a lot better than Frank's, and they think that it's a cakewalk for Frank. But but uh, I mean, it's a cakewalk for Shakur. But there's something about Frank. You know, after you see a fighter that has a uh, they get the win and it's not a in, in a impressive fashion. Is a lot of dog in Frank, you know. I mean, so I expect Frank to come and 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 fight a hell of a fight and and go out on the shield even if he lose. I mean, I really think this is a potential uh, fight of the year, you know, with these two guys. I really think this fight could be really big. 
you know, yeah. as far as predictions, if I had to make a prediction, I would give Stevens the edge, you know, but I, you know, I would say by decision, you know what I mean? Stevens by decision, but I think Frank, he's going to come and he's going to lay it all on the line. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, we've seen, you know, uh, Frank Martin have a uh, fairly impressive victory last year when he faced uh, then undefeated Michelle Rivera, uh, which was, you know, very impressive last December. But then, you know, of course, he had to fight against Artem Heratunia, which was, you know, I guess a bad style matchup for him, maybe in a sense. Uh, but, you know, he was still able to get through that particular fight and win that fight by decision. Uh, but now he's facing, you know, like I said, Shakur Stevenson, who, you know, is uh, rated among some as a great uh, pound for pound fighter. And so uh, that that would be something for uh, Frank Martin to, you know, have a definite step up fight uh, here in the lightweight division that's coming up, uh, whether it's going to be in October or November or wherever, you know, they basically schedule it. So uh, you do have that now. Uh, you also, you know, had another thing happen in the previous week as uh, former unified welterweight champion Errol Spence Jr. activated his rematch clause to face Terrence Crawford once again. Of course, Terrence Crawford won the undisputed welterweight championships on July 29th in Las Vegas with a stoppage victory over Errol Spence Jr. And, you know, even immediately after the fight, Errol Spence Jr. was mentioning, yeah, I want to run it back, definitely want to run it back. But he also mentioned and he was very adamant about this, that he wants it to be at 154 pounds. Now, it looks like they could still, you know, work to make that fight happen at 154 pounds, you know, regardless of, you know, the uh, contractual agreements or whatever it is. Uh, but, you know, whether it's, you know, scheduled for, you know, December or January or something like that, you know, a number of people are still kind of, you know, doubtful as to if, Errol Spence Jr. could, you know, give more of a competitive uh, fight towards Terrence Crawford, given what happened on July 29th. So what are your thoughts about that uh, as far as like him activating the rematch clause? I thought he would have waited. I mean, I was really thinking that Earl would have probably fought somebody in between like a tune up to make him look like, you know, he's back. Versus coming right away and activating the rematch clause after the performance that Terrence Crawford had. I mean, I mean, it was a it was a fairly easy fight for Bud. I mean, so I really wasn't expecting that. I, I, it's talks that he's departing ways with Derrick James. I mean, and maybe that's why. Maybe Derrick James was telling him, "Look, let's take another fight and then exercise it." But nobody knows. That's just rumors. I mean, until I see it factual, whether Derek is with him or not. But if he's not, it 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 it'll somewhat make me think that maybe he didn't like the instruction that Derek was giving him going forward. And I'm not talking about in the fight; I'm talking about the rematch. Hmm. Well, I mean, we kind of like uh, you know discussed that a little bit, you know, outside of this. Um, you know, yeah, that that rumor was uh, spread now in reference to you know Derek James or whatnot. And, you know, coming from where th that uh, thing came from, they had uh, mentioned a couple of uh, other trainers that could potentially be right. there, you know, in the corner for Errol Spence Jr. But, you know, one one of those trainers had been notified of that, and he basically said that's news to him. So as far as, like, you know, this rumor, oh. I was like, yeah, it, you know, that was a, and, a crazy there as far as, like, where then they, they were to. saying. They were saying Roy Jones Jr. and Roy Jones said Earl don't even rock with him. So of course, yeah. I mean, to me, you would be downgrading going with you would be downgrading going with Roy Jones, man. I mean, looking at at his pedigree of fighters and and what's happening with them. I mean, why would you even want Roy in your in your camp? I mean, it's not like he has a a, a pedigree of champions or even contenders. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. I mean, when I first heard that, I said the same thing. It's just a rumor. You know what I mean? I never really took it from concrete. But, I mean, who knows? You know how boxing is. A, a kid take a loss. Next thing you know, hey, the trainer's the first one that they blame. You know, so it's like, I mean, we we, we really won't know until it's, it, it, it's, it's concrete, you know. But I, it, it's sort of shocking to me that he's even trying to exercise the rematch this soon after the performance. I don't really see much he can do different. You know, 154, I mean, he may like with the nutrition and all of this right here that he was feeling so good. He made the weight no problem. And now, you know, it's almost like 
it's untrue. You know what I mean? Because it's like, why would you want to go up to 154? You never had a problem with 47. I mean, so what's the big idea now? Yeah. You know, it, it, it you know, do it takes the loss to say, well, I need to move up. I mean, it, it makes no sense. Because, I mean, all he's been talking about. All right. Yeah, hold up. Uh, ooh, direct. Yeah, go go ahead and repeat the, that. The first fight where he had the nutritionist was with Ugas, correct? Mm -hmm. So it's like, why would, you know, 47 be a problem now? I mean, because we didn't hear that, you know, going through um, the process of the Bud Crawford fight. Every time you saw a press conference, it was like he was on weight. Everything was good. So it's like, I don't know. I don't, 154, I, I don't really see much much of anything changing. I mean, I really see the same outcome. It was just too easy of a fight for Bud. I mean, uh, you did have the thing where, you know, Earl Spence kind of like, you know, hinted at what his intentions were going to be after this particular fight. But, you know, given like how long it took for the fight to take place, it, it was like he, you know, wanted to hold on to try to make 147 pounds. And, you know, while he didn't necessarily mention it, there were like other people around him or fans that were talking about, you know, maybe he just, you know, held out too long and he had like a different uh, guy for a strength and conditioning coach and uh, the strength and conditioning coach that used to be around. Uh, Errol Spence was, you know, saying things were different. But with that being said, now that you have this uh, rematch clause being put in place, whenever it's actually scheduled, now the pressure is on Errol Spence, not because, right. you know, he you know, of course, has to win the fight. But it's like, okay, now this fight is at 154 pounds. Now this is like where, where you say, okay, you you needed to do this because now you're you're going to be on weight, you're going to be on schedule, and then you got to make the proper adjustments too in order to get the win over Terrence Crawford. But like you said uh, there, when it came to July 29th, it was uh, more of like what Terrence Crawford was able to do in that ring being comfortable from start to finish that, you know, makes it going to be really difficult for Errol Spence Jr. to make, uh, you know, definite adjustments there for this rematch that's scheduled. And on top of that, you know, given that you have Derrick James that's going to be on the corner of Errol Spence Jr., well, we just mentioned Frank Martin, who is, you know, still under Derrick James. And then we have uh, what's coming up September 30th with Jamel Charlo, who has uh, Derrick James as his trainer. So mm -hmm. it makes his schedule be very busy once again. And I feel like that could be a definite factor as well when it comes to having those big or high-profile fights, how that particular trainer is able to focus on each of those fighters, getting them ready for those big bouts. Yeah, he, I mean, he's spreading himself thin, you know, so it's like he can't give – neither guy really the attention that probably they, they really need or, or would want, especially Earl coming off a loss. You know, Earl's like, he's the major player. You know, he, he really wants to get back and win and show dominance. I mean, it's almost like with, with Dirk, like you say, he got other fights. I mean, you got Charlo and, and, and Canelo right around the corner. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, it was rumors that, the Martin and Shakur could easily go to December and they could be on the undercard, right? So if that if that's the case, then you double dipping right there. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, I, I don't understand. He's gonna have to spread himself thin. I mean, and I don't I don't know how, you know, Earl would really uh be reciprocated towards that, you know. I mean, because I'm pretty sure he 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 wants full full attention on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, there there have been cases where you've had, you know, trainers double dip on, uh, you know, fights or, you know, high profile fights that would either be on the same card or on different cards. Uh, you know, like, hey, we had a recent example. I'd say, you know, Jose Benavidez Sr., you know, of course, has David Benavidez, but, you know, also had Ryo uh, in his fight there that was on that pay-per-view in March. Uh, but, you know, both of those fights were, you know, either high profile fights or they're very close in a sense. Um, but you know, you still have that instance where you're going to have to take that time where you're focusing on that one particular fighter so that he is, you know, definitely ready for a fight of uh, high sure. magnitude. And with Derek James having those, uh, multiple high level fighters, you know, like I said, Errol Spence, 
you got Frank Martin, you got Jamel Charlo, you had Anthony Joshua, and then also you have someone in the camp named right. Ryan Garcia too. Garcia, correct, you know? correct. So, so with all of those fighters that are there, and you have this particular schedule, it's looking like you know who uh, Derek James is going to have on the other side on uh, September 30th with Eddie Reynoso. When Eddie Reynoso had all of those fighters that were in his camp, you know, a couple of years ago, it's like. How are you going to be able to, you know, definitely focus on each of these fighters that would have, you know, high profile fights or a fight at a high level? So we're going to see how that turns out there for Errol Spence Jr. Uh, once they, you know, uh, activate or pretty much like say when the rematch is going to take place and then uh, when they'll be, you know, back in the camp, like full circle uh, for that rematch. So, I mean, that that's what, you know, we have there on those two topics. Uh, big ups to, you know, Brother Greg here too you know, of course, give his take on what's going on with those particular topics. And uh, we'll definitely uh, have more here, you know, where he's going to be jumping in. He'll have his take uh, here, you know, with us on the Boxing Source. So you're definitely going to be seeing more of him in the future, y'all. So until next time, I'll check y'all later.